Hi everybody and welcome to the Helen Winder Show. I'm Helen Winder and my guest today is Mark Asquith, founder of DMSQD and host of Excellent Excellence Expected. I'll get my teeth around that one. Hi Mark, how are you doing? Hey Helen, not bad, thank you. Not bad. I'm glad you've got your teeth. I've been <laughs> making sure that I've got mine in as well. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. Tell my guests a little bit about yourself. Who are you, where you come from, and what exactly do you do? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. It's, it's a great show that you're, uh, you're producing, so thanks so much for, for having me on. It really is a pleasure. And I'm actually from the north of England, I'm from a sleepy little town. Well, not so sleepy anymore, actually. Uh, a town called Barnsley, and I am... Um, the founder of a design and digital agency called DMSQD, which creates high-end graphic design, branding solutions, and digital platforms, so websites, e-commerce, apps, and software. And I also run the Excellence Expected podcast, which is aimed at helping business owners excel in business and in their personal lives. So a little bit of a mixed bag, really. Mm, don't worry. You should see the list of things that I do. <laughs> <laughs> keeps us interested. It does. Keeps us out of mischief. So tell us a little bit about, say, the the, the graphic de design side of things, DMSQD. Um, how did that come about? Yeah, so it's a bit of a long story, actually. I was In 2005, I was doing some consulting work uh, for the MOD and various other companies and corporations in the UK. And, and at the time, I was in a band and kind of running alongside the consultant, I wanted a website for this band. So I helped. Uh, sorry, I asked a good friend to help me out with it, and he tried to charge me eight hundred pound, which was <laughs> a little bit unexpected. Um, so I kind of thought, well, you know, I can probably do this myself. Mm -hmm. um, so alongside the consulting, alongside this digital training and consulting that I was doing, whilst I was in contract with other people, I was learning web design, I was learning WordPress, I was learning digital marketing. Mm -hmm. It kind of it, it stuck with what I was doing in my day job, if you like, because I was doing digital consulting. I was training people on, on this platform. So it kind of all tied together. Uh, and then a few years later, what happened was, I, I guess I kind of got a little bit bored. As I say, I was consulting and contracting, but it wasn't really working for myself. It was, it was kind of just going from contract to contract, still working for other people. So I stopped doing that and did web design full time, which kind of just grew and grew and grew into this whole digital Mm -hmm. I guess digital solutions business, so you know the graphic design side of things, we help companies rebrand, we help companies brand themselves and pitch themselves in the marketplace, uh, we create ad campaigns and marketing campaigns and also we run digital campaigns, so we'll build websites, we'll consult on user experience, we will help people make more money online and mm -hmm. however they want to do that we can generally help. So it's quite a quite a varied story but it's quite an interesting one really. It's, uh, it's certainly not where I planned on being when I was younger, but it's a very interesting journey to be on. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it, how we sort of evolve and how, how these things come forward. You know, we don't necessarily know at the time, do we, where we're going to end up. And you can have a little bit of a dream and, a, and a, an image of it, but uh, it's quite interesting how, they, how things progress. It's bizarre, isn't it? Because you kind of, I've always had that mentality of just like a really open mind. So, you know, if you if you open your mind to opportunities, opportunities will 90% of the time fall in your lap. And it's yeah. it's not, you're not doing anything any different to other people. All you're doing is opening your mind to the chance that if something comes my way, I'm going to, I'm actually going to appraise it. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to take it for what it is as opposed to just saying, well, no, that's not for me. And I always think if you've got that open mind, you can, it's amazing where you can end up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you just give it a go. You, even if it's not something that's going to be forever, you just give it a go. You, should, you just never know. You never know where that door will open to. No, exactly. And it, it really is an interesting one because, you know, the UK, I mean, there's such a, an entrepreneurial, I won't say there's a renaissance, but I think there's certainly a shift going on at the minute with people wanting to try things much more. I think we've always, in the UK, we've always been a bit more guarded mm -hmm. than in the US. I think the US has got this fail fast attitude where the UK has kind of struggled a little bit with that. I think the UK yeah. has always been, well, if you fail, that's a black mark against you. You've done something wrong. Yeah. Whereas in the US, it's very much get back up and dust yourself off and off you go. And I think the UK is kind of coming around a little bit to that. So it's really, it's really interesting to see that the youngsters coming through, you know, this next generation of business people, even at 16, 17 years old now, have really got this 
you know, the, the, the word's really cliche, but they've got this really dynamic mindset. You know, mm. they've got this idea of, well, yeah, okay, I can, I can probably do that. Yeah. Why, why not? Yeah, it's it's quite interesting. I mean, I know myself watching, you know, my children. Um, I mean, they're older, but I mean, Oliver will be twenty this year. But it is really interesting that their their sort of thoughts on on things, on business, on technology, on growth, and it, it's just really fascinating. You know, I never spoke about things like that when I was little. <laughs> no, I didn't either. And it was very much when I was when I was little, and especially coming from Barnsley, which is a you know, it's an old mining town which got decimated industry-wise, got decimated by the, mm. the Thatcher government, and it's. Mm. I find it really difficult because I sort of grew up on the tail end of that. I remember the miners' strike, and yeah. only very, very, very vaguely. I think I was about two or three years old, but I do remember it. Mm -hmm. And at the time, it was very. Well, in fact, not at the time, but over the next fifteen years of my life, it was very much coming out of the shadow of that. Mm. You know, and, and coming. Coming from the perspective of, well, you've just got to get a job, you've just got to do this, you, no one really likes what they do for a living, they just turn up to work and they work because that's what they do. And there was never the conversation about, okay, what do you want to do? And if there was, it was taken from the perspective of what do you want to do but make sure it's either go yeah. through college or get a job. Yeah. There was no, okay, I could start something, I could create something, I can do what I want to do, I can end up wherever I want. That was never really a part of even the town's mind, mindset, you know, the town still is a little bit of a can't town, you know, it's mm -hmm. very much a, mm, are you really sure you want to do that? That seems a little risky. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's a, it, there is a real generational mind shift going on at the minute, which I'm loving. I think it's really, really telling, and I think the next 10, 15, 20 years for the UK is going to be so, so interesting. It is, and especially with technology, um, you know, because you know, the marketing side of things, um, our websites, apps, you know, um, as we, we spoke, we were speaking before we came on air, you know, even our mobile uh, technology, not literally just mobile phones, but the things that we can carry in our pockets or your, you know, your bags, and it's just, it is going to evolve, and it is really interesting. It's, it's crazy, really. I mean, people can just create what whatever they want to create, which I think is really, really fun, and I think it's, the opportunity is massive for people. You know, if you've got an idea, you can execute it pretty quickly, and you can figure out whether it's viable or not. Mm. You know, the technology side of things is amazing because it gives you gives you a very early proof of concept if you do things right, and that's something that, you know, even 10 years ago, we just didn't really have that because everything was so slow and so expensive, and now you can just, you can build a small audience and ask them what they want. And yeah. If you can give them what you want, it's amazing. You can just make a living from serving a very small amount of people, which is mm. fantastic. Absolutely, and and also that's where we would need, you know, people like um, yourselves with with uh, DMS QD, uh, because you guys are are there. You're sort of in the forefront all the time. You're you're having to keep ahead in what's current on designs, even color concepts, because colors can mean so much to different types of businesses, can't they? And, and it, you know, that's why we need to engage with people like yourselves, just so that we can keep up to date. It's a really difficult thing to do as well for many business owners, because they're so involved in their own business that they, they think they know what the customers want. And a lot of the time you know what you do, but a lot of the time you don't really know what your customers want. I mean, as our own business, we have to be very conscious of figuring out what our customers want, because because you're very good at what you do, you know, each one of us are in business, we're in business because we can we can do what we set out to achieve, we can do that, otherwise we wouldn't be able to sell it, mm. and by virtue of that, we sometimes think we know better, and it's not on purpose, it's, it's entirely by accident, and it's with the best will in the world, but sometimes the customers want something that's just slightly different, and as you say, whether it's color theory, or whether it's some kind of design practice, or whether it's some kind of user experience, or a digital system, whatever that is, you know, you need people, whether it's someone like us or whether it's just a friend, whether it's, you know, another consultant, a mentor or, you know, a boss even, it doesn't matter who that is, you need someone to be able to say, well, listen, okay, this is what you think people want, but actually, have we asked anyone? Yeah. Has anyone told us? And that's really insightful, you know, back to that technology point, never has it been easier to gather meaningful feedback, you know, you can jump directly onto something as simplistic as SurveyMonkey and just ask 10 or 15 of your closest, closest users or customers or your most trusted customers, listen, I'm thinking about doing this, 
would you buy that? And if you yeah. wouldn't buy it, tell me why you wouldn't, and what would you buy? I mean, that that insight is just amazing, and it's all for free. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, years ago, I um, I was part of the design team for the uh, customer surveying process at Xerox, and uh, when I think about what we had to go through and pull together and design and, and create, and at the end of it, it was down to me on the phone calling all the analysts and surveying them over the phone because there wasn't um, the option to do it all online. <laughs> it's unbelievable, isn't it? And I mean, that whole that whole speed, you know, the one-to-many idea that you can put one bit of information out that just hits so, so many people versus the one-to-one -one that you went through at Xerox there. Yeah. You know, it, it's enough to change your business. It's enough to get people prototyping things very, very quickly. And especially when you start to add to the mix, as you mentioned earlier, things like apps where you can very quickly concept something if you've got the coding skills which is becoming more and more important in any business you know coding is becoming a real real cornerstone of many many businesses and if you've got those skills if you know someone with those skills the opportunities are frankly endless because all you need to do is solve problems for people if you can solve problems you you will sell it's it really is a different landscape to even five years ago yeah yeah, absolutely. So what type of um, companies do you work with? Are they are they sort of established firms um, where you're keeping their brand going or you're adapting their brand or are they startups? Yeah, so we work with, with a, a really wide variety of clients actually, Helen. It's one of those one of those things where you can't really you can't really put, I guess, any kind of label on the people that we do help. But it is a really wide ranging um, client base that we've got right from startups right up to multinational corporations and we do a lot in leisure and tourism as well and at the moment what we're seeing is a bit of a trend towards you know there's this kind of whole startup tech startup you know app startup kind of really romanticized really kind of sexy feeling scene around startups and we do a lot of work in that domain but also what we're noticing is that there's so many startups that are I guess a little bit more traditional so people like restaurants even people as crazy as this may sound, even people like plumbers who are really looking to create a better experience for their customers. So where mm. maybe four or five years ago, they weren't actually putting any focus on really well put together design or a well thought out digital strategy. These guys are now coming to us and saying, look, everyone's doing what I'm doing. What can I do to stand out? Mm. And the answer invariably is, well, you, we can create a better experience for your customers. And it's really... It's really good to see, actually, because everyone, right from grassroots level up, are really starting to put more of a focus on the customer because everything's so transparent. Everything is experience-driven. People want the best experience, whether it's from a plumber or an electrician or from a restaurant or from some kind of app or some kind of website. They're all wanting that experience. So that that seems to be the trend. So to answer that question directly, our client base is so varied yeah. and really our only remit is we can work with people and we do work with people who are very serious about returning on their investment and actually see the value in their customers mm -hmm. and I think if you've got that mindset it doesn't matter how big you are. Yeah I, I think that's really important to have I mean at the end of the day our customer experience on all levels is so important because that's what helps them come back to us and also become our, our fans. Exactly, and I think that's one of the big things that we're starting to see now, certainly at a grassroots level. You know, we work on digital strategies for so many people, and that, when you consider some of the brands, in the, certainly in the leisure and tourism in industries that we work with, you know, those guys can afford to spend time and money on experience, on creating brand advocates and fans of the brand. But actually, really local people and regional people are starting to do that as well, and they're creating their own little micro fan bases, this kind of little ecosystem around their business. Yeah. Which are allowing them to sell to 40 or 50 people and make a, a really a really good business out of just selling good good work or good mm. products good services to a very 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 small core audience which is really it's really really interesting because the tools that are out there you know things powerful things like closed facebook groups powerful things like things like webinars mm -hmm. you know, things like the podcasts or just giving extra value to people it can work on so many different levels. You don't have to be this big brand to do that. You don't have to be Starbucks or Coca-Cola or anyone like that. You can be John Smith's Restaurant or John Smith's Plumbing Services. And it's just 
just about thinking a little differently about how you go about talking to people, which is a massive trend that we are seeing. You know, we're getting asked so so often, can you help us with our language? As a brand consultancy, yes, that's that's what we can do. But the type of people that are coming and asking about that, you would never ever expect them to come knocking on the door because yeah. they would have never invested in that sort of thing five years ago. And it's it really is amazing. It really is. It's fascinating to see everything evolve. So how can um, our listeners um, get hold of you? How can they um, have a look at your, have you got a website? Um, are you on Twitter? I am, yes. I'm a, a bit of a digital denizen. I like to get everywhere I can. Um, <laughs> so people can, <laughs> I think everyone's online these days. I think they are. Um, no hiding yeah, them. <laughs> Check us out. <laughs> yeah, I think you, it's, we were talking about it in the pre-interview chat, actually. Everything's so connected. Um, but, yeah, if anyone wants to get in touch, by all means, you can check out the agency, which is dmsqd.com. And that's a very simple site. It's got all of our work on there. It's got some, uh, some case studies to show how we can help people. And as for myself, personally, you can check out all my personal work over at excellence-expected.com and on Twitter at m2, which is e m underscore T W O. Fantastic. Do you have some um, quick tips that you could share with, with our listeners? Oh, absolutely. Definitely. Um, the first one that I always tell people that it doesn't matter what you're doing, doesn't matter if you're in, in industry, if you're in business, doesn't matter if you're a hobbyist, doesn't matter what you're trying to achieve, no matter what that is, always give the people that ask for your time the time of day because mm -hmm. you never know what those people one can help you with and two where that relationship will lead so don't judge books by their covers always give people the time of day because they deserve it and frankly you deserve it as well um, mm. that's the first one definitely the second one is is just really because of all this connectivity and because of all this i guess this transparency online there's a real a real i guess a real problem sometimes in looking over the fence at what other people are doing and one of the biggest tips I can give is just, just stay stay honest with yourself. Do what you want to do. Do it in your voice. Do it with your mindset. Do it with your outlook. Do it with your beliefs, your ethics, your values. And put your own content, content out in your own voice. And that will serve you so, so well. Don't look at the successes of other people because they wouldn't have succeeded if they didn't do the, the things in their voice. So don't replicate. Do everything in your voice do it for you and stick to your guns because it gets it gets difficult but if you stick to your guns and stay consistent good things will happen I like those I like them very much and they're so true if we apply them I think the application especially the consistency I mean it's so hard so so hard you know we, are, we all have great days and we all have really really bad days and it's it's really important to just just stick to it you know just little bits of consistency every day that's where the success comes from it's not an overnight thing it's not the big success one day and then a big failure the next day it's consistency throughout and the ups and the downs will come but if you can just stay on the right trajectory yeah you know you'll, you'll, you'll achieve massive success from that personally yeah i totally agree with you there so moving on very quickly um this this uh your other um area of interest excellence expected tell us a wee bit about that yeah that's that's my outlet really for helping people i'm i, I like i like business and i like seeing people succeed and helping them succeed and overcome some of the problems and you know you and I are on the kind of cold face of business we're doing things day to day and I wanted to put some content out there that helps people like us really so that's what excellence expected is it's really helping people excel in business and also by doing so excel in their own personal lives whatever that goal they might have is um, and it's basically an interview format show where each episode we we have one expert and we pick one challenge that we're going to overcome and the expert gives their insights on one particular challenge so we've spoken about work-life balance we've spoken about search engine optimization social media marketing we've spoken about growing a global business we've spoken about HR we've spoken about how to maintain your employee engagement how to really kind of up your sales strategy without investing and it's really all aimed at making sure that people are living the lives that they want through their business. And it's not there's not one side of things getting on top of them. You know, we challenge all of these issues, and I've got an, an expert every episode helping me with that. Sounds really good. So how can we how can we tune in? 
Yeah, absolutely. That'd be great. Uh, always on the lookout for more listeners, and uh, you know, the more people we can reach and that we can help out, you know, without a doubt, the better. So, you can check out excellence-expected.com, which is the website, and there's also a free download on there, which is the essential 14-day guide to cutting your working hours and increasing your impact, which is mm -hmm. aimed at the business owners that are working way, way too hard. Mm -hmm. And you can also check it out on all the main outlets, so Stitcher, iTunes. Uh, the way to do that is just search Excellence Expected or search for my name, Mark Asquith, and you, you should come across it. Fantastic. And are you looking for more people to interview? Without a shadow of a doubt, yes, thank you for mentioning that. Yeah, we are, we're always on the lookout. We, uh, we do get booked up pretty quickly, but if anyone does want to, want to book up, they can go to excellence-expected.com, click on the Get in Touch link at the top right, and there's a booking form on there that people can book their own slot with. Well, listen, Mark, thank you so much for joining me today and sharing, obviously, your your experience in business, what it is you do, um, and maybe we'll, we'll catch up and we'll focus on a little bit of a, a subject area around, um, you know, our branding and, uh, and, and how, it, how important it is to us. That sounds fantastic. I'd love to do that. Helen, thank you so much for having me. And thanks to the listeners for putting up with my dulcet northern tones. <laughs> Not at all. It's, it's lovely. Well, mind you, I'm the other side of the Pennine, so maybe we will clash slightly. No, not at all. We should be bitter rivals. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, thank you so much. And also, thank you to my listeners for, for joining us today. You can catch up with this interview with Mark and all my other guests at www.thehelenwindershow.com. I'll speak to you all very soon. Bye for now. <laughs>